at it again. You know what time it is. Gen Sports Corner back at you for Saturday night, uh, November 5th, 2022. You know, game six tonight. Win or go home, do or die. Got to get it done, man. Phil's need to step up because if you don't get it done here, you can just kiss the season goodbye. So we're going to this game. A big spot. We have a rematch of game two between Zach Wheeler and Fran Baraldez. Remember in game one, Zach Wheeler got hit around. There's a lot of talk about his dip in velocity. Um, maybe he had a tired arm from September or whatnot. He gave up six hits over five innings. He only had three strikeouts, uh, three walks, and he gave up a home run. So, you know, he had a rough game that, that game. And then Fran Baraldez, he did phenomenally. Like I predicted he would. He had a 1.42 ERA, six and a third innings pitch, four hits, nine strikeouts, three walks. He was on fire. They won that game, what was it, five to two. They did a really good job in that game. I think he might have left with one man on base, so maybe that's where the one run came up in his ERA. But he had a phenomenal game. So they're going to be facing off against him again. And he was one of the best pitchers in the American League this year. And then... You know, this is really one of the few times that they got to see him. So the the good news is that they got to see Fran Bravaldez, see exactly who he is, what he is. He has a nice fastball, has a very, very good slew of breaking pitches. He hides the ball well, has a good stride to the plate. And he's just overall, he's just, he's just phenomenal. I think he's one of the better pitchers along with Javier on their pitching staff, even over Verlander, who's going to be the side young winner this year. But I think Fran Bravalde is one of the best pitchers in baseball. And like I said before in the second video from Game 2, the key to beating a guy like Fran Bravalde is, is patience, patience, and more patience. And I know I keep saying that over and over again, and it sounds cliche, but with a guy like him who can get wild in the zone, you have to be patient. Because if you make him throw first pitch ball, Second pitch, strike. Third pitch, he comes with a breaking pitch and he misses. Now you're up 2-1. You're in the driver's seat. You want to be consistently putting yourself in spots like that as opposed to getting down 1-2. And now you don't know what the hell he's going to throw to you, whether it's going to be curveball or change up or slider. So you need to be patient against that guy, get runners on base. And then once you have runners on base, now you can put pressure on them with the run game. So... You put pressure on who's a very good catcher in Maldonado. You put pressure in the run game. Now it's going to change the way you pitch. When you're constantly thinking about throwing over the first base, throwing over the first base, throwing over the first base, constantly taking your attention off of your pitches and on to the guy who's over on first base, is going to affect your pitch sequence. Is it going to affect your location? At times it can affect your mechanics because you're not focusing on the little nuances, the little things you need to do right. And then those are the times where you can be able to inflict punishment. And they're going to have to do that. And when they get guys on bases, be able to score guys that are in running position. So you look at this Astros lineup. And from last game, they had a very big injury with Yuli Gurriel, who I think was DHing for them. And he went out with the knee injury. Now, it came out that he had a sprained MCL. And Dusty Baker said that he's done for the rest of the postseason, whether it goes to six games or whether it ends in seven games with the potential winner between Philly and Houston. He's going to be out. So that was that happened during a collision when he was running down to first base and Reese Hoskins hit him and he fell awkwardly. So I'm not saying that he was doing anything great in terms of defense or anything since he was the Asian, but he was having a pretty good postseason. He was hitting 347 with two home runs and four RBIs in the NL the ALDS and ALCS, and then he was hitting 316 in this World Series. So you take him out, and you have to replace him with Trey Mancini, who has been the exact opposite, 0 for 18 in the postseason, and he's been 0 for 6 in the World Series. That's a night and day difference. So that's going to be interesting in terms of how that's going to affect this Astros team. I still think they're pretty solid from top to bottom, but that's definitely going to affect them and how this lineup is going to react against Zach Wheeler. Because for the same reasons that I said that Justin Verlander was going to bounce back from his game one performance, I think with the extra two days of rest, I think Zach Wheeler will also bounce back from his game two performance. I think that 
the Phillies getting a chance to see Valdez one time and get a feel for how he's going to pitch them is going to definitely help them in game six. He's still going to be a tough customer. Make no bones about that. He's going to be a tough customer regardless, but they're going to be much more prepared, especially scouting wise, because they've seen him now at least three times up at bat in the postseason. Now they're going to know how to adjust to his adjustments. They're going to know how he's pitching them. And you you better know that he's going to be pumping that fastball high. And they're now going to know that they're going to have to adjust to that. So for that reason, I think that this is a tough game, but an easier matchup than what I predicted with Christian Javier in game five against Aaron Nola. So I, I think that this game, while it will be very tough, I think that the Phillies are going to be able to bounce back in this game and force a game seven. That's my prediction for game seven. I don't know what all of you guys think, but that's my prediction for game seven. I think the Phillies will be able to bounce back in a tough game against Framber Valdez and these Astros. And I think that that Goriel injury is going to be a little more impactful than people give it credit for. I don't think that it's not like you're losing Jordan Alvarez or anything like that. I'm not saying that. But I think it's going to cause enough, enough turbulence in that lineup, losing that consistency after you pass, uh, what's his name? I keep forgetting his name. After you pass Bregman and Tucker, then you're going to run into Vasquez and Mancini. Mancini. I, I think that's going to make a big difference. So that's my prediction for the game. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, hopefully the Phillies can get the win tonight, but... Look, I try to be as fair and objective as possible. That's why I picked the Astros to win games four and five. I predicted that they would win when they had... I predict. I predicted that they would lose when they had McCullers on, and I predicted they would win when they had Fran Valdez on the mound, as well as Christian Javier on the mound as well. So, you know, that's my thoughts. Uh, leave your comments below, and... Uh, check out the video I, ju I just put out. There's a fight going on right now between Dimitri Bivol and Gilberto Rizzotto Ramirez. You don't want to miss that. It's on the zone, so go ahead and check it out if you have the app. And, hey, we're going to get into a win, lose, or draw. We'll be talking about this after the game. Go Phils, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.